So here's a typical upright tuba uh, of the German style, the so-called German rotary style. This is actually a compact model, but the uh, majority of them are a bit taller from, from bottom to, to bell, but it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this video. One thing that's pretty much universal with this style of horn is that the player holds the instrument with his left hand right in this area. So it's grasped in this area a lot, and you tend to see more uh, lacquer erosion in this area, wear and tear just from being gripped. And if the player's hands have more than the usual amount of acid in them, in the skin oils or perspiration, you can get corrosion. And um, a lot of times people will wrap some sort of a leather thing around there to protect the brass, but leather has its own problems. If it has any of the curing chemicals still in it, that alone can cause problems with the brass or the, the lacquer finish, if there is any. Um, one thing that's somewhat common with things like French horns and trumpet valve sections, which are grasped by the player's hands, is sort of a, uh, like a neoprene rubber wrap that goes around it. And uh, was it Neotech um, is one of the companies that makes a product like that. But as far as I can tell, nobody makes a product like that for this part of a German rotary tuba. And by the way, other styles of tubas such as the American style or the British style um, are grabbed differently on the instrument. It's really the German rotaries that have the situation where you can almost guarantee that the player is always going to grab it with the left hand and always grab it right in this area here. Just below the top bow on the, on the down tube and um, there's also quite often a reinforcing post right in the same area. Perhaps because the uh, makers realize that it's going to be grabbed a lot in that area and it may have more stress. It may be carried from that area sometimes. Uh, so if there's a wrap that's going to go around this, it needs to have provision for, uh, for clearing this post. So I'm going to try my hand at making a crude wrap of the sort I just described. And uh, I've determined that, at least for the sake of this experiment, something on the order of five inches tall is probably appropriate. Uh, the average hand, when it's in grabbing mode, doesn't occupy any more than five inches. It could be made six inches, I suppose, but it seems like it would be getting awfully large. I don't know. I would say five to six inches is probably a good vertical dimension on something like this. And uh, so let's say that it's going to go in about this area here. I'm actually going to position this one just below the bend and make it five inches and not actually have the slot in it, it's going to go right above this post down here just to make it simple. And uh, so measuring up in this area, and I'm using a, uh, a tailor's or a sewing type tape measure, just a cloth tape measure, uh, a metal tape measure will probably scratch the instrument when you try to wrap it around, plus it's not going to be conformal enough. So we have just about an even 8 inch circumference up at the top of this and about 8.5 inches at the bottom end. So not it's tapered but it's not extremely tapered and that should make the design and layout of this a little easier. So here is an inexpensive roll of neoprene foam. It's, uh, this is particular one is 12 by 54 inches and an eighth of an inch thick. Here's the model number, but without a brand, who knows what the model number means, if anything. So this foam came from Amazon. This is the listing. Dual Plex Neoprene Sponge Foam Rubber Sheet Roll, 12 by 54 inches, perfect 
cosplay padding, do-it-yourself project sheet, easy cut non-adhesive multi-function soundproof rubber foam sheet. Uh, twelve ninety five. You can also buy it in uh, quarter inch and half inch thicknesses. Goes up to about twenty three dollars for the thickest version. Anyway, so that's where I got this stuff from. So here's the basic design. I have a five inch tall by eight inch piece here, and that's for the uh, circumference at the small end of the horn. And then because the bottom dimension has to be bigger, I taper the sides outwards. So at the bottom, it's an extra quarter of an inch wide on each end. That will allow it to conform to the slightly conical shape of the tube. And if I just wrap it around, then this joint here and this end here would meet up approximately. Uh, I'm going to be using some Velcro to close it, and I have some three-quarter inch Velcro, more on that in a bit. And so I want to have a sort of a run out here that adds an extra three-quarters of an inch. And because I have an overlap of an eighth of an inch, um, that's going to take that up, so I'm going to go an extra uh, eighth of an inch beyond that. Um, matter of fact, I think I'm just going to call it one inch. That extra quarter of an inch will take into account the circumference dimension lost due to the overlap and have a little bit of overhang uh, to kind of hide the Velcro from view a bit. I think that'll be useful. I'll still put the Velcro up against this line, and if I decide the overlap is too much, I can always trim it off later. I've just marked on the neoprene sheet with a, a black ballpoint pen, making two or three passes, left enough of a line to see for cutting. This is uh, nine and a half inches total. And this is five inches. So here is the cut line here. And this is just a reference line, but the angled one is where the Velcro will come up against. And then this is the run out area here. This area here won't be part of it. So the Velcro will lay in this area, but up against the line on this side of it. All right, there's the piece cut out. So I need to use some sort of Velcro on this to hold it um, in the wrapped position. And uh, looking around on the Velcro website, they had this particular one, which is intended for fabrics rather than hard surfaces. Uh, this particular one is a 10-foot roll, 3 quarter inches wide. I wished I could have got it in black, but it only seemed to come in white. And as they say, it's a no-sew fastener, permanent adhesive, withstands laundering, and then you get your choice of languages, convenient alternative to snaps, buttons, and zippers. So it should take a fair amount of beating, not that I expect this application to have much beating. It shouldn't be under much stress and it probably won't get opened and closed very much at all once it's installed on the instrument. But I sent Velcro um, customer service an email through their email portal and said, hey, you know, um, it specifically says this is for fabrics. I want to use it with neoprene foam. So it has a texture which is not that dissimilar to many fabrics, but will the adhesive on your product work with neoprene? And the first thing they did is sent me a totally boilerplate response, which was full of meaningless crap, totally useless to me. I sent another one back and said, listen, you didn't answer my question. Uh, and then they said, oh, well, there's a different product you could use. And they basically just recommended the Velcro product, which you can buy in any hardware store, 
which is just little strips of Velcro with the hook on one side and the loop on the other. And you can wrap it around power cords and hoses and things like that to keep them tidy. And I said, unless you make it in five inch wide versions, it's not going to help me. I'd already described the dimensions I needed. They totally disregarded it. So then the third time they said, we don't recommend this product for use on neoprene. No explanation why. Is there a chemical reaction? Does it just not hold? Does the adhesive not hold well to neoprene? I don't know. They were not helpful at all, really. I think they were just basically people reading off of a script. And if the script doesn't lead them to an answer for a particular question, they just say, uh, we don't recommend that you use it for that. I think that's their fallback. I don't think their response means anything. So, a couple of days ago, I cut out a couple scraps of this foam and put the the uh, loop Velcro on one piece and the hook Velcro on the other side and mashed it down good and let it sit for a couple of days just in case the adhesive gets a little stronger with adhesion time. And um, then I tried to peel it off and it seemed like it was really on there good. And uh, then I, you know, applied it. And let's see if I can. So now I'm trying to pull it in the shear direction, which is the way this it'll be stressed in this application of mine. So I'm trying to pull it sideways. I'm putting a lot of force on this and it's not budging. Um, I pull it off. There's no indication that the Velcro is lifting off the neoprene. Uh, I think it's plenty strong for this application unless something goes wrong with it over time. Um, and it's not like there's a huge investment here. If it does go bad, then I can just peel it off and throw it away and do something else. So I think this is, in my little empirical test here, seems to indicate that I should be able to use this product. So I'm cutting the Velcro just a little bit short of the dimensions of the, of the foam, just so it doesn't go right up to the edge. Okay, there's that. I have the uh, hook side here, and as planned I have the slight run out beyond that for cosmetic reasons. And then over on the opposite side and the opposite end I have the, the uh, loop side of the Velcro stuck on. And I just made, I really made sure I really mashed it in to get the adhesive into the, the foam texture as much as possible. So let's see how it works on the instrument. So I'm wrapping it around here. Uh, one thing I found in doing this is that it somehow ended up just a little bit short. And I think that's just because of the bulkiness in this area here. Um, I put in a quarter inch allowance, but I don't think that was quite enough. I should, probably should have added another quarter inch or so to the circumference from the raw measurements. All right, that came out okay for a first pass. Looks okay. Um, we'll see if the Velcro holds on. I had to stretch this one a little bit because it did end up being just a little shy in the dimensions. And um, that puts more side loading or shear on shear force on the um, on the Velcro, and I'm not sure it'll hold or not. On the other hand, it's supposed to be usable with clothing, so I don't think the Velcro itself will fail. It's possible the adhesive may not hold on. I also thought that maybe it would be advantageous to try to sew along the edges, uh, just to add a little edge reinforcement. But I think trying to keep this simple first and foremost is the best approach. And then um, 
you know, if I decide I need to improve it in some way, it's cheap and quick and easy to make another one with small variations. Okay, here's a slightly larger one I made for another instrument. It's uh, five and a quarter inches tall and it's slightly longer this way. I also added a little bit more um, on this side so that I wouldn't have to stretch it so much going around. Um, hopefully I estimated the right amount. And this one also has a post that's right in the way so I notched it out. It really only needs to go through the, the overlap area. It doesn't need to go much further than that. So I did go just a little bit beyond and then to keep the neoprene from splitting, which it can do at sharp edges, I put just the um, the loop side, since it's softer, just a little piece always inboard so it would be uh, inside the wrap and then um, just trimmed it out a little bit. Hopefully that will do the trick. Alright, um, that dimensionally worked out pretty well. The, um, the one thing I probably should have done a little differently is taken into account how much of a gap was between the tubes here. And it can't really do much about it. I can't get neoprene thinner than an eighth of an inch, nor would I want to use it on something like this. But by the time you add the thickness of the Velcro, it was a bit of a chore to push those thicknesses through the gap because it was a bit wider. I had to use a plastic ruler and kind of just jam it through there and it doesn't allow for any rotation this way. And as a result I had to make the Velcro joint um, back here on the player side where it won't show, which meant I didn't even need to cut a notch in the overlap area. So maybe making a paper pattern first would have been smarter instead of going right to the cutting and gluing part. But uh, I think it's working out pretty well. Time will tell how uh, well it holds up.